Okay, here's a pop geography question. Where do you think this is? Colorado Rockies? How about Yellowstone? Maybe Utah or Idaho? Actually, it's none of these. These scenes of unspoiled natural beauty are what people who live here see every day. This is Central Oregon. It's where the east side of the Cascade Mountain Range drops down to meet the high desert plateau. When we say desert, we're not talking about the Lawrence of Arabia kind. It's just that this side of Oregon tends to be dry because the Cascades to the west capture much of the state's coastal rains. These young couples didn't come very far to get here. They're doing something that is part of a big travel trend called staycations. These folks don't have a lot of time or money, but they desperately need a break. So they've decided to stay closer to home. And what a home it is. They've come to a vacation rental home in Sun River, just outside the city of Bend, Oregon. And this is the story of how much fun you can stuff into a four-day staycation. In the process, we're going to get a hint of one of the best kept secret travel destinations in America. And what people do here when they're getting away together. Today, most people who come to Central Oregon for a vacation come from areas less than a few hours away. They've come to a vacation rental home in Sun River, Oregon, specifically the Caldera Springs development, just about 15 miles south of the city of Bend. If this group looks a lot like a family reunion, it's because most of them grew up together and have been hanging out and playing together for years. We always traveled far, you know, money was not an issue and so you go to Hawaii or you go here and now that with the economy everything's changed so we wanted a vacation close to home. Why not Central Oregon? I mean, there's so many things to do here and you just can't do it in a weekend, you can't do it in a month. I obviously haven't done it in my lifetime, so why not? Their designated ringleader is Wendy. When we first got here, Sean and I instantly loved the big front door, how tall it was, and the welcoming feeling that the entryway gave to the home. One, two, three! Wow! And then you open up the door, and there's this huge great room, a huge kitchen, and then you have to kind of explore to see everything else. I've known Wendy since sixth grade. We used to live next to each other when we were young. Wow, Ryan. I met Sean and Wendy riding dirt bikes. We were camping one weekend and that's where I met my wife, Kara. I've known Wendy my whole life, um, Sean also, so it's been awesome. They, we have a great time together. We always said we were friends before family, so that's kind of cool to have so a really cool. good friend. That's also my uncle. Let's look in here and check out oh. this room. Oh, oh. that's nice. Nice, it's all right. Good. Carol and Wendy worked together for quite a few years at the same office. And then, of course, you know, Sean and I were just kind of drugged together by their relationship. And Sean and I really got to know each other, and Jim and Wendy really got to know each other. And from then on, we were definitely couples friends. Wow. This vacation was different because it was couples um, rather than family. And it was different in I had never rented a house really before to stay in all together. This was our first experience. Oh my God, look at this bathroom. It's huge. Look at the shower. This is the shower? Oh my God, I gotta get everybody. Hey guys, come check this out. Shower? What? Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> How oh my God. gosh. How cool oh. is this? <laughs> this is right now. We are getting married in about three weeks yeah. and now that you know we're meeting them and getting to know them but the wedding's three weeks away it's like oh I should have invited these guys right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean. In spite of the fact that thousands of savvy travelers have already discovered Central Oregon 
the place still remains pretty much a secret to the millions of tourists that overcrowd less beautiful destinations. That situation is not entirely a new one. Even though Native American Indians have lived in this part of the world for nearly 12,000 years, the wagon trains of the 1800s pretty much bypassed Central Oregon. The famous Oregon Trail went northeast of the area, and with it, most of the 1840 pioneers. Famous explorers went through the area, but no permanent settlement was recorded during the 1800s until the first railroad service hastened the start of two sawmills. Immigrants of Scandinavian descent moved here from the Midwest to work in the mills and brought their native love of skiing with them. Little did they realize that the ski slopes would inevitably save the area's economy. Probably the one thing that drives all activity in Central Oregon is something that never stands still, the mighty Deschutes River. For 257 miles, the Deschutes snakes its way through alpine forests and black obsidian lava. This part of the upper Deschutes is a stretch of white water known as the Big Eddy Rapids. Sun Country Raft Tours has been leading people out here for more than okay, 30 years. Guys, grab a paddle over here. All right, ladies, come on down and take a look. Okay, so these are the Big Eddy Rapids right here, right? You can see all the lava rock forming the rapids out here. They start you out in a seemingly quiet little part of the river while you practice your paddling technique. We went down one small section at first so to warm me up a little bit and then it was nice and calm and you went around the turn but you could hear the roar before you even came around the corner. Then nap time is over. Sections of the rapids have names, and one turn faced by a giant wall is called Bat Cave. Well, when we were rafting, he said, oh, you know, this is, you know, level three, but he also said, whatever you do, we don't want to hit that rock wall. So when we actually hit the rock wall, I thought, okay, all bets are off now. And going through class three rapids backwards, <laughs> where water is th like being poured on you in bucket loads, um, that was kind of scary. You know, your eyes get a little big. But you know, we all worked together and got out of it. It's so funny because three minutes later, calm water, like you know, nothing's going on, so you can take a breather. Ryan was pretty adventurous, and I tell you what, when we went over that first big rapid and he flew up, I thought he was going to fly out of the raft, and I looked over to make sure he was still there, and he was, but his eyes were huge. He thought he was going to freak out or something. Okay, everybody ready, right? On three, everybody say white water. One, two, three. White water! Every night after we came back from the activities, the kitchen was usually the first place we all went to to grab a glass of wine, some champagne, a glass of water to rehydrate from the crazy activities of being out in the sun all day. And then we shared some of the stories and the funny scenes and the remember when and all of that that happened throughout the day. And that pretty much happened all night long. Yeah, I know. I love it. Our group has established some solid traditions, like splitting up into separate boy and girls day out activities. This course called Crosswater is literally five minutes from their vacation rental home in Caldera Springs. In Central Oregon, even if you're just along to drive the car, these are not your ordinary golf links. There it is. Pretty much in every direction, you look out over snow-capped peaks, even in the middle of summer. That's Mount Bachelor in the distance. The heart of Central Oregon is a little town called Bend. You guessed it, 
It's right at the bend in the Deschutes River. At one time, the two largest timber mills in the world were here. Today, Downtown Bend is a great example of how to grow a whole new economy without dismissing the glory days of the past. The historic Tower Movie Theater has been turned into a state-of-the-art performing arts playhouse. Now there's some taller buildings there and they have some great hotels and some fantastic restaurants. It's fun to be downtown. The Riverside restaurants and boutique Very shops make for One, great girls' two, day out shopping. Three. Pal's Sweet Shop, the only one in Oregon, features over 6,000 kinds of treats, many which make you say out loud, I haven't seen that since I was a kid. It's such a fun store. I mean, they just have any kind of candy that you can imagine. I mean, if you asked your parents or grandparents what kind of candy they had when they were kids, um, you would find it in there. Reagan told me she got to dress up like a princess and see a bunch of candy and stuff, and her mom would talk to her about candies that we had when we were kids. Matt McCall and his mom Kathleen run the place, and it's more of a lifetime dream for Matt than a job. Peanut butter cup, copa mista, mint chip, creme brulee, chocolate covered banana, malted milk ball, lemon heads, hazelnut. My dad is a millwright and he's a lumber man and he's worked in mills my entire life. He still works in a mill and uh, there's no mill in Bend anymore. Now they have the old mill district with pieces that have been retained from that, the three big smokestacks that you see when you're in the old mill district. Those are uh, refurbished from the old mill. Okay, next step, the paddling portion. In spite of the uh, fact that palace, most people think about whitewater rafting uh, in this part of the world, right? a newer form of self-propelled water sport is taking hold in central Oregon. Stand-up paddle boarding, or SUP, is a great way to navigate your way through the old mill district of Bend and along the scenic Deschutes River. When we were getting the lesson about paddle boarding before we actually got in the water, Dennis was making it sound like it was this most stable thing, you know, big, wide, foam board, you should be fine. And then you get out there and you feel like you're going to fall over every minute. Men don't like to admit it, but women are actually often more skilled at paddle boarding than men because of their lower center of gravity. Nonetheless, sooner or later, no matter what anyone says, gravity usually wins. Everybody was saying, who's going to be the first one to fall off the paddleboard? And it was Jamie. Right. And then you're like, whoa, is he mad? OK, OK, <laughs> can he get on his board? OK. And then he got back on. It was pretty funny when Jamie went in the water. Because Jamie, you kind of take as this hardcore guy if you don't really know him, and for him to be the first one to splash into the river was, that was pretty funny. I've never surfed, I've never, you know, I've wakeboarded and done some things behind the boat, but I think balancing on a board is a little bit different. And um, so I was surprised that I actually got up and stayed up and, you know, I did fall one time, but <laughs> that was okay. I was proud that Reagan, you know, when she went and paddleboarded, and Ryan too, and you know, Riley, and they were all out there moving their feet all around and doing things that I, I definitely couldn't do. I know Travis didn't do. Remember that for paddleboarding, you don't need waves at all. Standing at your full height, it's almost like walking on water. As easy as it looks, though, it's actually a pretty intense full-body workout. And so, it's becoming a favorite cross-training activity for skiers, yeah. snowboarders, and <laughs> other athletes. Oh, that's Mount Bachelor. Do you guys see that? Jolyn said when they came back from canoeing, how fun it was to have Ryan and Reagan there, because I thought it was just going to be just Zach and Jolyn in the canoe, but when Ryan and Reagan were there, Jolyn said that made it even more fun. Those are ponderosa pine. I think, you know, there's certain 
people in certain moments that they'll always remember. I know Reagan and Ryan had a chance to go out in the canoe with Zach and Jolyn. They saw all kinds of things and fish and deer and in the mountains and had a really good time. So that was the first time Reagan had ever been in a canoe. Actually, I think Ryan too. So I think that was a new experience for them. And, um, you know, just sharing that with Zach and Jolyn made it that much more special. I'll point out some little fish again. Some what? Little fish. They had a lot of fun. I think they'll look back on that and I was pleased to see that they got along so well. look. That's so pretty. Did you see To me, that? I think they'll be looking at children in their future. <laughs> one of the really cool things visitors can do in Central Oregon is also one more of its best kept secrets. It's called the High Desert Museum. But don't think musty hallways and stuffed birds. The museum's property includes 135 acres of natural forest, and a walk through it offers an opportunity that is rare even for a seasoned backcountry explorer. We're not in an arena or anything. We're out in a clearing in the woods. James Dawson, an internationally recognized expert on raptors, recently joined the museum as curator of living collections and decided to offer something really special. So the Harris hawk is a really interesting species. You can see that they're uh, equally at home on the ground as they are in the air. And uh, they look ungainly, but uh, they are really effective at running around and chasing quarry. And in fact, if you look at this bird right here, you can see uh, you're going to recognize it because this is a, the model that they use for Jurassic Park to choreograph the uh, velociraptors and the foot movements of nice. velociraptors. Uh, and there obviously is a connection between velociraptor and these modern birds, an evolutionary connection. It was pretty amazing having a bird fly right over your head and you could hear the wind from their wing go right past your ear. I wasn't expecting that at all. I did not anticipate being out in the woods and they call the birds in. It was totally amazing to be in their own habitat, see them react, see them act. It was awesome. My favorite part of this vacation was going to the High Desert Museum and seeing how amazing it was for the birds to fly right over your head and not touch you, but you can literally feel the air from their wings just, you know, brisk past your head. Central Oregon has over 500 miles of rivers and 150 mountain lakes. Fly fishing around here is not an activity. It is a lifestyle. Most people would say that the hook fly shop is the epicenter of it all and that Fred Fosse, its owner, is the area's 25-year veteran guru. It starts at Little Lava Lake. It flows eight miles into Crane Prairie, which is the only stretch of the 257 miles of the entire river system that's wild. Okay, uh, before we leave, we got one little issue that I saw uh, standing over here. Uh, it was, uh, I believe, Wendy eating a banana. What does that mean? Uh, bananas are bad luck when you go fishing. And it's a Polynesian <laughs> folklore. And what it was, at one time, bananas, uh, they rotted easily on boats, so they were not a good food supply. And they also brought tarantulas and big spiders that bit people and killed a lot of the crew members. We don't want that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the scenery? Oh my gosh. I know it's beautiful right here with wildflowers and stuff. All right, here's what these fish are going to sit. See this little dip right here? Uh -huh. Right there? They're going to sit right in that little dip right there. Fly fishing was my favorite event of the entire weekend. Just come on out here with me. I'm going to grab you by the back of the waders just in case, okay? This is insane. I can't <laughs> believe just this little river, how strong it is. Oh, yeah. Wait till you get Holy to a big one. smokes. A little bit further up. Okay. It was so great because you walk down this awesome path, you hear the river, you see the wildflowers. Now, what I want you to do is lift it up and flip it back here. Just a good quick motion. Quick. There you go. Nice. Now, this is called a mend. Okay, now we'll watch that indicator. If it goes down, follow it, follow it. If it stops, you give it a pull. The water's so clear and crisp. Great. It was calm. Nice. It was paradise. I'd like to just plop a chair in the river and just sit there all day. It was awesome.
All right, Jim, hey, you know what? Yeah. We've got a good spot right down the river here. We'll head down there, and then we'll see if we can't work a couple of big fish sitting underneath the cut down there. That right, sounds great. All right, let's go. All right. I decided to just take it upon myself and see if I can get a fly wet. And uh, so we went down and, and started fishing. It was fun. Yeah. All right. Whoa. All right, let me see it. We'll get him. There he is. That's a pretty little thing. Yeah, nice brook trout. He's got those beautiful pink dots on him. White tips on his fins. Woo, Jane! Good job, Jane, honey! Way to go! Carol likes to be outside, and she <laughs> loves being in the outdoors. But she's usually not one to participate in activities like fly fishing and that sort of thing. Uh, so that was a great surprise for her, and I think she really enjoyed that more than she thought she would. I had never been fly fishing before. Certainly never had hip waders on before. It was pretty fun. Just like that, I'm gonna come over to you, okay? I watched my wife get your first fish on a fly rod. That was awesome. Let me get in here with you. Don't let him go behind you. All right, good job, yeah. <laughs> That's Oh, yeah. Is he bigger than mine? Yeah, he is. About three times bigger. <laughs> Yay! Maybe a little spud. <laughs> nice. It was more about watching Carol catch the fish uh, and do something she's never done before. Uh, that, I think, was exciting because that opens up the door to, you know, us to be able to maybe potentially do that again someday. And actually catching a fish the very first time I went fly fishing, that was pretty cool. Because I'm not such a lucky fisher person. So <laughs> that was, and it was bigger than Jim's first fish. around Central Oregon are known for their quiet, a bit more laid-back personalities. But one person who will never hesitate to share what he knows with you about the people and landscapes of this part of the West is a fellow named Rick Stieber. Rick is the author of more than 30 books and is a member of the Western Writers of America. And, and you, you think back, what did those people leave behind? It was a beautiful evening. I mean, that was a classic Central Oregon sunset that night. We just pulled a bunch of chairs up around it, and we just sat and relaxed and listened to stories and roasted marshmallows. And rubbing them together faster and faster and faster. And again, a scoop. I loved sitting around the campfire, but then to have this super cool dude show up and tell all these awesome stories about people that he'd actually met in Central Oregon, all over Oregon, all over the country and tell those stories about their lives and capturing that and being so animated about it, that was super cool. And look at how we've changed the landscape. His parents it's told him amazing. when he was a young kid that every time an old person dies, it's like a library burning down. That was so like inspiring to me that he knew what he wanted to do, which was save these stories that just caught all of our attention and were just wonderful to listen to. Central Oregon is a great place to vacation and we live here but sometimes life takes you away from actually going out and experiencing it. So I've lived here for 23 years and I've never been whitewater rafting. I've never done the paddle boarding so it's been awesome. It's been such a great new experience to do everything at home. It was a real eye-opener to actually be involved and see what we're missing and no, don't take it for granted anymore. This has been a great house for this group of people. I mean, we're all friends now, but we don't have all the same interests, and so there was enough space in the house where people could do their own thing. It wasn't really so much about what you were doing all day long together, but when you get back and you're talking about what you did all day together. My favorite memory of the week will just be that we were all together and got to experience new things that we've never done together and it's always better when somebody experiences it with you. There's a saying around here that whoever visits Central Oregon moves here. Our group doesn't have to do that. They already live here. But we're not so sure that when others see these glimpses of what our group did over these last four days that they won't move Central Oregon way up on their list of places to consider 
when they're getting away together.